a former Dallas Cowboy. Dallas Cowboys player Josh Brent. Dallas Cowboy involved in a crash that killed his best friend. A Dallas Cowboys player charged with manslaughter after police say he was driving drunk and crashed. An alcohol problem, a dead teammate, and a promising sports career cut short before it could reach its zenith. These and many more sorrows mark the tragic story of former American football defensive tackle Josh Brent. In the aftermath of a tragic motor car accident that claimed the life of his teammate and best friend while he was behind the steering wheel, allegedly under the influence of alcohol. Playing professional American football in the National Football League is the dream of many people across America, Europe, and even the larger world. A successful NFL career is crowned with immense wealth, affluence, and a handful of very attractive benefits. The case was no different for young Josh Brent, who began to pursue a journey to the big league as a junior at Central Catholic High School of Dallas, a city in Texas in the United States of America. Making eye-turning records and keeping his stats high, he worked his way up from his college team to finally securing a spot in the National Football League with the Dallas Cowboys in 2010. However, the story of Josh Brent, although fancy from an overview, isn't one many would love to draw inspiration from. At just 21, while attending the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign, Brent's college career and time at the Finding Alini was cut short after he was arrested for driving under the influence, a first in the many felonies that would outline a troubled adulthood for him. Brent was ruled academically ineligible to play the senior year of college, but desperate to join the NFL, he applied for the 2010 supplementary draft. Fortunately, he was taken in the seventh round by the Dallas Cowboys to join their team and would go on to blow minds with spectacular performances, despite having a broken left arm during the early stages of training camp. The Dallas Cowboys knew they had struck gold with Josh Brent and he would soon become a key player on the defensive line, replacing one of their important players, Jay Ratliff, who was out with a long injury. However, only two years into what seemed to be a budding career for Brent, he would lose it all in a ghastly car accident that tragically claimed the life of a fellow Cowboys player who happened to also be his best friend. This incident set him on the path of years-long court cases, public scrutiny, guilt, and remorse. On the 8th of December 2012, Josh was joyriding in his car with Dallas Cowboys linebacker Jerry Brown Jr., whom he had known and played with since their college days when they got involved in a deadly car crash. The two American football players had been out having a good time, visiting several VIP clubs where they had liquor shots and partied late into the night with several other players from the Dallas Cowboys. At about 15 minutes past 2 o'clock that morning, after buying several Ace of Spades champagne bottles, Brent accompanied by his friend Jerry Brown, drove his car out from the parking lot at Beamer's Nightclub, a popular private nightclub in the city of Dallas, Texas, that mostly catered to VIP class guests and celebrities like himself. But only four minutes later, by 2.19 a.m., an allegedly intoxicated Josh Brent sped into the sidewalk on the eastbound access road of Texas State Highway 114 and flipped his Mercedes-Benz S60, killing his passenger Jerry Brown while sustaining injuries himself. This tragedy happened barely hours before the Dallas Cowboys squad was to be on a flight to Cincinnati for a big game. Following 911 calls made first from the in-car phone in Brent's vehicle and then by a bike rider passing by a few minutes later. 911. There's a car in the middle of the road on fire upside down. Units from the Irving Police Department arrived at the scene to meet Brent attempting to pull his injured and unresponsive teammate out of the now burning vehicle to the side of the road. Paramedics arrived at the crash scene shortly after and rushed Jerry Brown Jr. away in an ambulance to a Dallas area hospital, where he would be pronounced dead from suffering blunt force trauma to his head and neck. He was just 25 years of age and his death came as a great loss to his family, the Dallas Cowboys team, and the entire National Football League. This would attract severely unpleasant penalties for Josh Brent, especially as he had been previously arrested for driving under the influence, for which he was sentenced to 60 days in prison and two years of probation in June 2009. By 44 minutes past 4 a.m. that fateful morning, Brent was carried away in handcuffs by Irving police on charges of intoxication manslaughter and booked into Irving City Jail, but would be out of jail after posting a $500,000 bond. A bond his lawyer would claim was way too much for him. Moved by guilt for his role in the tragedy, Brent felt the need to show his remorse and clear his conscience with the public. 
and in a statement he released through his agent, he said, I am devastated and filled with grief for the loss of my close friend and teammate, Jerry Brown. I am also grief-stricken for his family, friends, and all who were blessed enough to have known him. I will live with this horrific and tragic loss every day for the rest of my life. My prayers are with his family, our teammates, and his friends at this time. Regardless, he still came under heavy attacks from the press and general public, making it difficult for him to attend games, and this led to his team placing him on the non-football illness list. That this was his second time to be arrested for driving while drunk added a disturbing twist to the story in press reports, and he faced the possibility of serving 2 to 20 years behind bars if convicted of killing his friend and teammate, Jerry Brown. As this changed from a mere auto crash to manslaughter, investigators wasted no time in digging deep into the details, searching to understand what went down during the early hours of the 8th of December 2012. They interrogated eyewitnesses from the crash site, reviewed the responding police dashcam footage, questioned the teammates they had been out drinking with, as well as all the nightclubs they had visited that night. All these they did in search of the clues that held the truth behind the events leading up to the tragic death of NFL player Jerry Brown Jr. and if it would prove that 24-year-old Josh Brent was guilty of the intoxication manslaughter charges mounted against him. Investigation from the crash scene would bring to light that Josh Brent had indeed recklessly been driving at least 110 miles or 180 kilometers per hour and may have even reached speeds of up to 134 miles or 216 kilometers per hour right before the car skidded and charged towards the curb. His Mercedes-Benz then swerved back into the middle lane and spun off the road before tumbling an unknown number of times and bouncing along the grassy edge of the road as it tumbled. It would travel a distance of nearly 300 yards down the roadway before finally coming to a standstill upside down and catching on fire, which was eventually extinguished by the emergency services that responded. The extreme speeds Brent drove at in a 45 miles or 72 kilometers per hour zone pointed to one thing alone. He was drunk behind the steering wheel, a fact that didn't mean good for him. On the 16th of December in 2012, Jerry Brown Jr.'s body was laid to rest in an emotional funeral service conducted at the Hopewell Missionary Baptist Church in Dallas, Texas. The funeral service held a week after the tragic car crash was wildly attended by his extended family who had asked Josh Brent to sit with them through it and also a handful of players from the Dallas Cowboys and other teams he had been a part of during his short-lived football career. Jason Davis, who helped in recruiting Brown to play on the college team at the University of Illinois, had this to say about him when he spoke at the funeral. I'm sad, but when I think about Jerry, I just think about the happy Jerry. He was so humble, he was so funny, he was so good at football. The former linebacker was remembered by family, friends, and colleagues for how much of a present his life always carried. A great sense of humor, strong religious values, and a lifelong passion for playing football at the National League. They bade him farewell that day and from thence began seeking justice for his untimely death. A justice that would come at damning costs to his best friend, Josh Brent whose hand he died at just a week ago. Josh wasn't off the hook just yet. In a failed attempt to escape the legal implications of the intoxication manslaughter charges placed against the defensive tackle, Josh Brent's head attorney, George Milner, argued that he wasn't drunk when his car tumbled on the side of the road and killed his teammate. Brent was guilty of being stupid behind the wheel of a car, not driving drunk on the night of the December 2012 crash that killed his close friend and teammate, Jerry Brown. His lawyer said in his opening statements trying to discredit any evidence of overdrinking from that night. However, Brent's history of driving while intoxicated and the sobriety test the Irving Police Department gave him that morning, which he failed, held stronger testimonies about his character than the lawyer's word. The attorney would also go on to argue that because of Brent's bulky weight, being 320 pounds, he could consume more alcohol than most people usually would. Without getting intoxicated, and the drinks the two NFL sportsmen had on the night of the crash wasn't enough to get him drunk. He further questioned the authenticity of the sobriety test the police put Brent through, claiming he didn't pass it because he had just been in an automobile crash. Despite this, condemning evidence from investigations into events leading up to the automobile accident revealed that Brent had three bottles of champagne and also multiple cocktails with shots of liquor in them before taking the driver's seat that fateful day. 
Also, when the police tested him at the scene of the accident, Brent's blood alcohol level was 0.18%, a level authorities said could have taken as many as 17 drinks to achieve and was more than two times the legal limit for driving of 0.08%. On the 26th of December 2012, Brent was indicted on a single count of intoxication manslaughter, but this didn't keep him out of trouble as by May the following year, a Dallas district attorney would file a request to revoke his bail for not adhering to the monitoring conditions dictated for him by the court. Since his initial release on bond, Brent had been wearing ankle monitors solely designed to track his alcohol levels every 30 minutes and also detection patches designed to track the presence of drugs like opiates and marijuana in his bloodstream. Both monitors would give off irregular readings at different instances, leading his prosecutors to drag him before a judge, requesting an order to keep him locked up while he awaited trial for his intoxication manslaughter case, as they believed he had taken substances his bond prohibited him from using. Although this request was denied by the judge, Josh Brent would soon be sent back to jail for a short stay after he failed a drug test on the 27th of June in 2013, returning positive results for marijuana. He was, however, released 10 days later. Brent wasn't the only one indicted in this manslaughter case as it would go on to also affect Beamer's nightclub, the last club the NFL players had partied at before hitting the road that night. Beamer's nightclub was accused of serving alcoholic drinks to Brent while he was obviously intoxicated, an action that violated the Texas Alcoholic Beverage Commission laws and would attract heavy fines and probable punitive actions if they were found liable in the death of Jerry Brown Jr. The VIP nightclub's management company denied this as they claimed Brent was not drunk when he arrived at the club that night and was not drunk when he left as well. But this didn't deter Jerry's mother, Stacy Jackson, from filing a civil lawsuit against the owner of the bar as she believed they held a greater share of the blame for what had happened to her son. Although hurt from a sudden loss and strained from the string of court cases that would follow, Mrs. Jackson and the rest of Jerry Brown's family forgave Josh Brent, maintaining that they held no grudge towards him for his role in the death of their son and would want no charges placed against him if it were up to them. Instead of harboring bitterness or seeking vengeance, they chose a path of kindness, extending compassion and understanding towards the young NFL player and best friend of their late son. If only this compassion was enough to ease Josh Brent of his woes, now burdened by the weight of guilt, remorse, and the legal repercussions from his misdeeds hanging on his shoulders. The courtroom became the arena where victory would be sought, and the football field faded into insignificance as Josh Brent announced his early retirement from playing in the NFL on the 18th of July in 2013. A decision he made to focus on his court cases while still maintaining ties to his former team but now serving as a member of the practice squad. After awaiting trial for a period that seemed to last forever, Josh Brent was sentenced on the 24th of January in 2014 by a Texas jury and given 180 days of jail time, a $10,000 fine, and 10 years of probation. The jury had found him guilty on charges of intoxication manslaughter that killed his close friend and teammate, Jerry Brown Jr. The judge presiding over Brent's case didn't hold back or go easy with his words for him, calling his actions irresponsible in bringing up his past drunk driving case. You chose the path of irresponsibility, he said. No driver's license, no insurance, you shouldn't have even been driving a car to begin with. You chugged a bunch of alcohol, weren't wearing your seatbelt, and didn't make sure your passenger had a seatbelt on. Right, be seated, please. And Mr. Brand, if you'd remain standing, I'll ask the presiding juror, ma'am, has your jury reached a punishment verdict? Yeah. All right, I'll read the verdict as follows. We, the jury, having found the defendant, Joshua A. Price Brent, guilty of the offense of intoxication and manslaughter as charged in the indictment, hereby assess his punishment at 10 years confinement in the Institutional Division of the Texas Department of Criminal Justice and a fine of $10,000. The United States judge dished out a piece of his mind before reading the decision the 12-person jury sitting on the case had used the last five hours to come up with. A decision many considered to be lenient on the former NFL player as he initially faced the possibility of spending up to 20 years in the enclosed walls of a prison cell. This would be the second time Brent was serving a sentence in prison. The first lasting only 60 days when he pleaded guilty to a DUI charge that also ended his college football career in 2009. In his time locked up, he reflected on his choices and vowed to honor Brown's memory by turning his life around 
And on the 15th of June in 2015, after serving his six month long punishment in prison, Josh Brent was allowed to walk free. But the scars from December of 2012 remained fresh, not only on his conscience, but also on the minds of family members and NFL fans across the world. Brent was released on a 10 year probation and went through a mandatory rehabilitation process, after which he would conditionally be reinstated by the National Football League and activated from the Dallas Cowboys reserve list following a 10 game suspension. Things looked bright again for the defensive tackle whose life had only known loss, prison walls, and public scrutiny in the past two years. And this brought joy and happiness to many people, including the mother of Jerry Brown, Stacy Jackson. My beautiful son is in heaven now, and Josh has been given a chance to live his life and do something for someone else. Although I miss Jerry every day, I know he would be very happy that Josh has another chance to play football. She gleefully said in a short statement to a sports reporter when asked how she felt about Brent being reinstated to play professional football with the Dallas Cowboys, the team he and her late son were previously part of. Josh Brent seemed to be getting his life back and charming his way into the hearts of everyone, from fans of the National Football League to his teammates and the family of his late best friend. Although he would quit playing football in the NFL to focus on his personal life soon after his release, at that moment the skies over his head seemed to be blue once again and he gave his best to the sports career in front of him. However, Brent's redemption didn't last forever and his blue skies would turn to gray four years down the line when his old drinking habits sadly caught up with him. On the 30th of June in 2019, the former NFL player would have his troubled past unearthed when an unidentified caller requested Koppel police officers to perform a welfare check on a man seen talking to himself while sitting on the grass outside a Wendy's restaurant in MacArthur Boulevard, Texas, worried for his safety. The police identified the man as Josh Brent, who appeared to be intoxicated when they arrived at the Wendy's parking lot in response to the call. Brent went on to resist arrest when told he would be brought in for public intoxication. He became uncooperative, not letting the officers place him in handcuffs. They getting this That's for real? Yeah, bro. Are you serious? Yes. Somebody's really getting arrested right now. This crazy. Oh. <laughs> oh, he got off. He got off. Oh. Oh, they chasing that. <laughs> oh, oh, God. Are you serious? Are you actually serious? Are you kidding me? The police attempted to verbally de escalate the situation, but that didn't amount to any success, which would lead them to use a stun gun to subdue Josh Brent, an incident that passersby captured and circulated on social media in the days that followed. In one of the videos that made the rounds, the former NFL player could be heard declaring, I'm a cowboy, you can Google me, I'm Josh Brent. Leaving all to wonder what his life would have been if he had developed healthier habits and shunned the vices that destroyed everything he worked for. According to the Koppel police statements, Brent, now 31 years of age, would later admit he had been drinking and got booked into Carrollton jail that night. He was charged with assault against a public servant and resisting arrest with a bail set to $50,000 while his public intoxication case was left pending. Although he had admitted to being drunk at Wendy's parking lot, Josh Brent would later be sent to undergo a psychological evaluation. As some of his peers suggested he may not have been drinking that night, it was for this reason his public intoxication case was not handled immediately. But this was only the beginning of his woes in 2019. Brent's past haunted him strongly, and in December of the same year, he would be slammed by a Dallas jury with a $25 million verdict alongside the owner of the now defunct Beamer's nightclub. This came in connection to the drunk driving incident of 2012 that led to the sad death of his best friend, Jerry Brown, for which he and the nightclub's management were both found 48% liable, with the victim, Jerry Brown, taking the remaining 4% of the liability. As if he hadn't seen the insides of a courtroom enough for one lifetime, Josh Brent would get sued again in the aftermath of the $25 million verdict, and this time by the owners and management of the now-closed Beamer's nightclub. 
The money was awarded to Jerry Brown's mother and his estate, who had filed the civil lawsuit demanding up to $90 million, mostly from the owners of the private nightclub, stating they were responsible for over-serving an already drunk Josh Brent. Mrs. Jackson, Jerry's mom, told the press that the bulk of the money won from the case would be put towards charitable causes through a non-profit organization dedicated to the memory of her son. Finally, Jerry's family would get some form of closure over the death of their son, and even though the money would not bring him back, helping the needy in memory of him seemed like the best way to preserve his legacy. I'm still going to have the same feeling that I had on December 8, 2012, Jerry's mother said, but if this can help somebody else where they don't go through what I'm going through, it was well worth it. She added, this sums up the sad story of Josh Brent, an exceptional NFL talent whose best years were wasted in courtrooms fighting legal troubles. A tragic tale of many twirls and turns, all stemming from a reckless habit of excessive alcohol consumption and the consequences of living with the regrets of a haunting and avoidable past. Although forgiven by the family of his victim, Jerry Brown, Josh Brent remained plagued with the scars from the 8th of December in 2012 in the years that followed. This true life story serves as a cautionary tale for people irresponsibly consuming alcohol. It is never too late to seek professional help, learn from past mistakes, and push oneself to do better while holding on to accountability on the road to recovery. Maybe Brent could have turned his life around for good if he honestly utilized one of his many chances at redemption and quit his habits once and for all. The fate of Beamers, the private nightclub found liable in Jerry Brown's death, also sends a stern warning to bars and clubs alike, especially ones that do bottle services and place no priority on the safety of their customers. Chasing profits from the premium drinks that celebrities like Brent buy when they've clearly had too many will only result in tragedy and possible punitive actions. Brent attempted to get his life back on track after his best friend was killed in a car accident caused by his drunk driving. However, he relapsed and got into more trouble over the years. But as of now, not much is known about the former defensive tackle's activities as he has stayed out of trouble since 2019 and avoided any contact with the press. However, his legacy remains a tainted one and a stark reminder of the consequences of choices both on and off the field. Every year, Jerry Brown, the victim of this story, is remembered by his family, loved ones, and the entire football community as the star player who never was. And that's a wrap on the twisted case of Josh Brent. Tell us what you think in the comments below, and don't fail to subscribe, like, and share this video. Thanks for sticking with us and watching today's video till the end. See you on the next one. Thank you for watching.